Welcome to the Humble Podcaster, the podcast where we help you follow through on your dreams of creating your own show by providing practical knowledge, tips, and tricks on podcast production. I'm your host, Chris Hill, and on this episode, we're going to be discussing... Daddy, daddy. Uh, yes? You want to talk into the microphone? Uh, la, la. Oh, yeah, you're such a good podcaster. Thank you. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Aiden. I love you. All right. Let's let's go back to the top there. I'm your host, Chris Hill. And on this episode, we're going to be discussing recording, editing, and... <laughs> Jeez. Hang, hang on. Okay. I'll just pick it up from, from here. We're going to be discussing recording your podcast, as well as an overview of the gear you'll need to get. Now, now let's just uh, let's just play that back and and see how it sounds edited. I'm your host, Chris Hill, and on this episode, we're going to be discussing recording your podcast as well as an overview of the gear you'll need to get. Great, got that down that time. As you can see, recording and editing your audio is not the easiest thing to do. Since the pandemic, more people than ever are working from home, and that means close quarters with the people you love the most and more opportunities for interruptions. Dogs barking, cats running over your keyboard, kids crying, and the unexpected deliveries. And all this adds up to less true quiet time to sit down and record episodes, much less editing them. If you're producing your show as a hobby, I'm going to set the expectation now. Be prepared for long hours of your spare time going to recording and editing. If you're doing a podcast for your company, I say, same. As you've already seen in the series, I'm trying to do a lot to help make your process as easy as possible, but regardless of our best laid plans for the show, it all comes down to the audio we capture for the show and what we do with it. Recording your audio is the execution of your idea, so getting this part right is equally as important as getting your positioning right. This is where you will establish the credibility you hope to bring by having a podcast. But all of that can go out the window if you open your show and it sounds like this. Welcome to my new podcast where I talk about interesting things with interesting people. Some of you reading and listening will say, so what? It's a podcast. Isn't it more important to have a good idea than have it technically correct? And yes, if you're a hobbyist on a budget, I definitely encourage you to get after it. Don't let having expensive gear get in the way of a good show. There are plenty of successful shows that are done on a low budget at low fidelity. The problem is the majority of podcasts with low budget and low fidelity don't have good content. They're just two dudes joking about how unscripted their show is and acting like they're amazing. Or making inside jokes that no listener would ever get because they're not privy to that information. And that's just not what podcasting should be for several reasons that I have outlined in previous episodes. And several more for which this is not the platform to really discuss. Suffice it to say, if you're going to be doing this for your business... You should absolutely ensure that you have a budget for some decent gear, and you should absolutely stick with everything we've covered so far for producing your show. In the end, you'll be glad you did. So, with that in mind, what gear do we need for podcasting? Well, first and foremost, you're going to need a way to capture the audio. If you plan to record in person at all, then I recommend getting a physical recorder like the Zoom P4 or a Rodecaster Pro. I do not recommend relying on a laptop or tablet to successfully capture an entire podcast session. I know, sure, there are some that will do it, but I can't tell you the pain and heartbreak I've felt when you get to the end of a session and see the infamous system out of memory, followed by the program crashing without saving your hour-long recording session with someone you spent months trying to get on your podcast. If you're recording by yourself across the internet, then of course, use your computer. A USB interface like the Scarlett Solo, or if you have a higher budget, the Universal Audio Apollo are great picks. If you want a good starter USB mic instead of an interface, then I recommend the Audio-Technica ATR2100, the Samson Q2U, and please, do not get a Blue Yeti. Sure, they're all the rage, but they are terrible mics. By way of example, 
I'm currently talking on the blue snowball. I don't have a blue Yeti, admittedly, but this is just a simple example for what it might sound like compared to my normal voice. Hopefully this gives you some understanding of why I say these aren't the best mics, especially when you compare that with something like the Samson Q2U, which is what I'm talking on right now, or the Shure MV7, which is the mic that I'm currently talking into. And just for a control, this is my voice without any of the processing that I have going on my current setup, which is a RE20 going into a Universal Audio Aero. Okay, Whew. we got the processing back on now, and uh, back to normal. So let's continue. Where do we leave off? All right, recording software. As for recording software, I recommend a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation, like Adobe Audition, or Audacity, if you're on a budget. Heck, even GarageBand works great if you're doing this for the first time, and just testing the waters. I've done some extensive testing of online recording platforms, and in my experience, they have the most consistently good audio of any platform that I've found, while also having the capability for video. Zencaster and TriCast also deserve some honorable mentions here. Although, we have run into issues with Zencaster audio getting out of sync in the past, and TriCast just frankly can be a mess of a product to download audio from if you don't know their UI very well. However, TriCast does have great audio, and a simple workaround with their audio is just to have TriCast upload all the audio directly into Dropbox. And now for the fun stuff. Microphones. We can waste a ton of money on microphones. Exhibit A, the gear that I'm using to record this podcast. So it's important that we find a mic that works well from the outset. How do we know what kind of a mic is good for podcasting? In general, I think the best microphone is a dynamic mic with a cardioid polar pattern. If that terminology is Greek to you, let me explain a little bit. Microphones are classified as either condenser mics or dynamic mics. Technical specifics aside, the important thing to know is that a condenser mic is going to be way more sensitive and requires phantom power, or plus 48 volts, in order to operate. A dynamic mic is going to be less sensitive to sound and does not require phantom power to operate. For podcasting, as noted already, I prefer dynamic mics because they tend to work better in real-world scenarios where there is bound to be at least some background noise. Condenser mics are great for capturing voice, sure, if you have a full-fledged sound booth. But take them outside a studio and you'll find yourself capturing every single noise. To illustrate this point, I decided to take a couple microphones, the AT2020, which is a condenser mic, and the Shure SM58, which is my go-to basic dynamic mic, and took them into the bathroom to test them because the bathroom's an echoey place. I figured that'd be a great place for you to get a sense for how they sound. Here's what we came up with. Right now, I have the Audio-Technica AT2020. And this is a condenser mic. And this gives you an idea for what sound is picked up while I'm using this microphone. So here's me with the SM58 talking. Right now I'm talking with both microphones on and you can hear the background noise, but I'm going to cut off the ATR2020 so you can hear what it sounds like with just the SM58. This is in a bathroom and you should be able to hear a big difference in um, the amount of noise sound isolation. All right, and now I've cut the SM58 off and I'm talking on the ATR2020 so you can get a comparison for what the two sound like. So hopefully that helps you with understanding the difference between the two mics and the amount of background noise that the dynamic mic picks up versus the condenser mic where you've obviously got a lot more reverb in the background. One more thing to note with dynamic mics, since they don't have phantom power, they are often underpowered when it comes to their gain input. And this is especially true if you're recording on a mic like the Shure SM7B. And there's a huge problem with that. All audio recorders and interfaces have a noise floor. Mics and cables add to that noise floor. But if your gain is maxed out, that noise floor is going to be really obvious regardless of how good your mic is. Add to that fact 
that your mic may still be underpowered, and by the time you increase the gain in post, you're left with a very loud background that you'll need to tame if you can. So to fix this, you'll need to buy a gain booster. This attachment will allow you to use phantom power to boost the gain on your mic so that you don't have to crank the input gain all the way to 11. And to be clear, you don't need one for every dynamic mic, but they are useful for some better mics on the market, including, as I mentioned earlier, the Shure SM7B, and my personal weapon of choice, the Electrovoice RE20. So now, what about the polar pattern? Why is that important? The polar pattern is how the microphone picks up sound. There are several different ways you can set up a polar pattern on the microphone, but the two we're concerned with are omnidirectional and cardioid. The omnipolar pattern picks up sound from any direction. This is great if you're using a lavalier mic and can't really rely on, you know, expert placement to capture the sound all the time. And by contrast, a cardioid polar pattern is where it's directional. It rejects noise that doesn't come from the proper angle. You must address the mic correctly in order to capture proper audio. For instance, on this microphone, when I talk over to the side and try to talk into the mic this way, you get a much different sound than when you're talking directly into the microphone. It's obvious that this side of the microphone is not the correct way to address the mic. This is the correct way to address or talk directly into the microphone. Given these differences, it's pretty clear that 99% of the time, you should be using a cardioid pattern mic. However, I bring up the differences here because the Blue Yeti and many imitators are known for boasting Omni and other weird polar patterns with things that you don't really need in a microphone. Just to be frank, these are gimmicks. You should never record multiple people around one mic for an interview style podcast. Every guest should have their own channel and their own mic if you want it to sound professional. And if you're recording solo content, nobody wants to hear your podcast and your roommate flushing the commode or your dog barking. Cardioid gives you more control over these situations and ensures you can still have a fairly quiet recording, even in louder environments. So, how do you choose a mic that's right for you? If you're able to make it out to a local shop and test out microphones, then just frankly, I recommend you do that first. Talk to the store associates, play around with the microphones, and find one that you feel fits your voice. Just remember, dynamic and cardioid. And also don't think, well, I can EQ this out just to have the microphone that everybody's talking about. And just to be honest, like the RE20 I'm using right now is great, but I've got a bit of a deeper vocal register and it helps really bring that out, but also bring out the brighter tones of my voice. If you have a higher registered voice, this microphone may not be for you. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you're in a place where because of the raging pandemic, you can't go out to a local store and test out microphones or you're immunocompromised or just don't want to get out of the house, then I recommend checking out the YouTube channel Podcastage. The host of that channel, Bander, is way smarter than me with mics. And after several video reviews, you can quickly use him as a control to compare how mics should sound. He knows his stuff. He's really fun. Go check him out. Give him a subscribe. As for mic recording and technique, I think there are five simple rules you should always follow. Number one, speak with your full voice. I can't tell you how many times we've recorded with someone and they have gone from being great and outgoing and frankly pretty loud to all of a sudden shriveling on the microphone and getting really quiet. Hearing your own voice in the monitor can be part of that head game. And to that end, I recommend keeping monitor volumes low unless they specifically request the volume to be increased. Additionally, not speaking with your full voice can lead to what we call vocal fry. And if you don't know what that is, it's where you talk at the back of your throat. It sounds a little like this. And if you've got a deep mic or you really like the lower register of your voice, you, you might find yourself talking with more vocal fry in the voice. Speaking with your full voice will help you quickly rectify this situation. I find this one to be most common when discussing serious matters, by the way. So how do you get out of vocal fry? Well, like I said, speak with your full voice, but some people may not visualize that really well. For those that don't, 
fully grasp that, I've got a great link to an NPR resource that goes through some vocal coaching on vocal fry. They do some other vocal coaching things as well, which I think you'll find helpful, especially if you're doing solo content. So I'll put that in the show notes for folks. Number two, use headphones. If you plan on recording live, always have a pair of over-the-air headphones for your guests. The headphones will ensure that your guests will stay close to the mic and will help them focus on the conversation as well. As noted above, don't let the volumes get too loud just to ensure that they still talk at a comfortable volume and that they don't fall back on vocal fry or talking too softly into the microphone. As you may have already realized, either about yourself or others, people are self-conscious about the sound of their voice, and many people don't even realize this until they hear themselves on the mic for the first time. To that end, if you're recording online, make sure your guest knows to bring headphones. There is nothing more painful than an interview where you hear the host in double. In addition to sounding like an obnoxious echo, if you want to take out your laugh, a cough, a sneeze, or whatever on the recording, it's going to be doubly hard when that is also heard on their end during the most important line in the entire interview. And as another pro, this also prevents the guest from yelling into their laptop, which is one of my top podcasting pet peeves. Just remember, friends don't let friends yell into laptops. So what do you suggest to your guests? At a minimum, suggest, God forbid, AirPods. As an example, I'm currently talking on my AirPod Pros. And as you can hear, Bluetooth devices are the worst kind of microphone you can use for recording a podcast. But it beats yelling into a laptop. A step up would be an inline mic on headphones. That's right. The basic Apple AirPods that I'm using right now are better than your fancy AirPod Pros for podcasting. Beyond that, if you can afford to ship them a mic or recommend they buy one, that would be ideal. But I understand, everybody's on a budget. Not everybody can afford to do that for every guest. Number four, if you stumble over a phrase while you're recording, go back and restate it. Make sure you don't overstate it, of course. Meaning, me reading this again, if you stumble over a phrase, go back and restate it. Go back and restate it. Don't do that. Don't overcorrect. If you're recording live, this is a good practice to get into as you can always go back and use the cut where you didn't misspeak. Number five, you're only going to sound as good as the audio you record. If you're recording in person, take a minute to listen to your surroundings. If you're recording online, listen to your guest surroundings and yours. Make sure you're in as quiet and distraction-free of a location as you can manage. If you hear a bunch of reverb or echo, you may want to reconsider recording in your bathroom. Use the walk-in closet instead. Seriously, that's actually where I'm recording right now. It's one of the best places you can record at home. And a blanket fort is actually a close second as well. Technically speaking, I recommend that, at a minimum, you set your file type to WAV, that's W-A-V, And you set them up to have a bit depth of at least 16 bits and a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. I also recommend, if you can, to set your recording to at least a 24-bit bit depth with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. It's a quality that's good enough for podcasting and it won't eat up storage on your computer's hard drive. Okay, now that we're set up, it's time to record the trailer. Which brings us to our homework. For your homework... We need to record that trailer. You're gonna wanna make sure you have that script ready. And one last quick pro tip before you dive in. When you start recording, I recommend you open with three to five seconds of complete silence. This is your opportunity to catch the room tone and the noise floor. You're gonna want that in the edit, and I'll explain why once we get there. If you're recording with a guest, I recommend counting down three, two, one on your fingers so everyone knows when it is time to start. Once that countdown is up, you're live. And once you're done recording, make sure you do the obvious, stop the recording, then ensure that the project file is saved if you're recording on a computer or ensure the audio was captured on a recorder. After you're done with that, you'll be ready for the final step before we launch your podcast, the edit. It's gonna be fun. Thank you for listening to The Humble Podcaster. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at humblepodcaster.com and be sure to follow us on Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want to connect with us on social media, you can find us at HumblePod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And remember, stay humble, stay on course, and keep on podcasting. This has been a Humble Pod production. Stay humble.